Welcome to this very special new departure for the Innovation Show. An experiment that I've been toying with for some time. I actually tried this quite a while ago, but I was missing an ingredient that I've now got. I'll explain to you in a second. So let me explain what's happening and what this is, this project. In the background, you will hear an ambient soundscape that contains a 10 hertz binaural beat. By means two, an aural means relating to the ears or hearing. The word binaural literally means having two ears. Binaural sound is stereo sound that is recorded through a dual microphone setup. The goal of recording binaural sound is to create a 3D audio effect that stimulates sound as if it's being heard live. Binaural sound is best experienced with headphones. According to Psychology Today, when two tones of slightly different frequencies are played in separate ears simultaneously using headphones, the human brain perceives the creation of a new third tone whose frequency is equivalent to the difference between the two tones being played. This illusion is called a binaural beat. For example, if a person hears a tone of 405 hertz in one ear and 415 hertz in the other, they would be hearing a binaural beat with a frequency of 10 hertz. Binaural beats are said to provide a plethora of benefits, the same as meditation, they lower stress, increase focus, aid with sleep and relaxation, boost mood, assist with pain management and foster creativity. However, those claims are not yet supported by scientific evidence. So that's binaural beats. The next thing to understand is what those induce these beats. The goal of this track is to induce the alpha state. And the alpha state is the speed of the brain waves in your brain. Alpha state is best known for relaxed focus, stress reduction, positive thinking and fast learning. It's also become known as the happiness frequency. When I run workshops, for example, I try to get everybody into that alpha state so that they receive the information that bit better and that their investment in a workshop or training is worthwhile. The music you're hearing and will hear going forward is conducted and created by a brilliant guy called Brian Larson. Brian has a website called Metaverse with two T's, M-E-T-T-A-V-E-R-S-E. -E. I've bought these tracks from Brian, all with different frequencies, but all with a common goal to relax you so that the information you will receive will pass into long-term memory. Now for the visuals, because this is the piece I was missing. I was creating these visuals, it was taking me ages. And then, of course, along comes a brilliant innovator who solves that problem. Enter Nikolai Klemke. Nikolai is a physicist and hobbyist rapper who was frustrated by the fact that he had to create these long videos just like me. So he created an AI generator that will do that. He has kindly offered a discount code to Innovation Show listeners, The Inno Show, T-H-E-I-N-N-O-S-H-O-W, and you can use that for his website, neuralframes.com. It's a beautiful site, and I use that to create the visuals that you will be seeing during these tracks. For this one, I thought I'd create a mandala, Mandalas literally mean circle or completion in Sanskrit. They are sacred symbols that are used for meditation, prayer, healing and art therapy for both adults and children. When my kids were young, I used to do mandala coloring in with them and I got as much benefit as they did. Mandalas have been shown in clinical studies to boost immune system, reduce stress and pain, lower blood pressure, promote sleep, and ease depression. So you can get what I'm trying to do here. Now, for the very first inaugural Thursday Thought in audio, 
I chose this one because I felt that it speaks to the very idea of neurodiversity. And these sessions will be behind the premium window for the innovation show. There's a premium tier. But I thought I'd make it this one and several I'll make open access. This one in particular I thought was important to make it open access, not only because of its popularity as a Thursday thought, but because of the very nature of the article about neurodiversity. The article is called Hire for Neurosignature, Train for Skill, The Brain is Like a Waterbed. Autists are not just square pegs in the round hole of society. The real problem isn't the challenge of fitting them in. It's that in trying to do so, we risk destroying their unique shape. Paul Collins The parents of an autistic young man approached a local convenience store, hoping to secure a job for their young son. The retail chain manager said he would give the kid a chance. On his inaugural day, the manager tasked the young man with organizing food items by their expiration dates on a single shelf. He figured that'll take him at least the whole day. To the manager's astonishment, the young man had meticulously arranged every shelf in just three hours. This young man, perceived as disabled, viewed sorting the produce by date as a delightful puzzle. His neurodiversity brought joy to the task and put him in the flow state. But the story gets better. Harnessing the youngster's unique ability, the retailer employed him to travel between his stores, solving puzzles and sorting food items. This valuable skill saved the retailer a significant amount of wastage and helped him achieve sustainability goals. Today, this young man earns so much that his father left his previous job to drive his son who cannot drive around the country solving puzzles for the retail chain. Joe Vitale once said, we all have a calling. Each of us has a role to play on this planet. When we play the instrument that is meant for us in the orchestra of life, we will be in a constant state of bliss. So what's the moral of this story? Everyone has a unique place if the world gives them a chance. Unfortunately, stories like these are scarce. The unfortunate reality was recognized best by one of the great geniuses of our times. Albert Einstein once said, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it's stupid. Because the work system is set up for efficiency, it caters for the majority. It is a drain on resources to cater to everyone. It is even more challenging to interview everyone, so we hire for homogeneity. And somewhat understandably, as human resources people, officers and hiring executives are already stretched to the maximum, companies are dealing with a tumultuous business environment. They are preoccupied with quenching multiple fires, AI, digitalization, remote work, supply chain, volatility, business model shifts, data, GDPR, inflation, the housing crises, pandemics, and even wars. The modern workplace is structured like a fine cut diamond, rigid, linear, and sparkling with hierarchy. This construct drawn from centuries of church and military organization may bring a semblance of order but it simultaneously smothers the potential of those who don't fit the mold. Neurodiverse individuals can struggle in such traditional environments. Executives often overlook them or ignore them outright due to their distinctive ways of processing information, their unique patterns of thought and behavior, and distinctive communication styles. To ensure that these square pegs aren't shoehorned into round holes, we need to rethink the design of workplaces. We must build environments that foster neurodiversity rather than suppress it. 
The modern workplace is more like a network of networks, teams of teams, nuanced and complex. The brain works in a similar fashion. The brain is more about connection than it is about calculation. Understanding this can help executives update the workplace. Imagine a world where everybody got to use their talents and didn't have to shore up their weaknesses and in many cases disguise those weaknesses. That's the focus of this Thursday thought. Imagine the brain as a waterbed. When one area is pushed down, or in the case of the brain damaged, underdeveloped or overdeveloped, the other regions fill that void. This phenomenon mirrors what is known as the waterbed effect. Just as the water in a waterbed redistributes when pressure is applied, the brain can restructure and adapt when certain abilities are not utilized. This is not necessarily a sign of deficiency. On the contrary, it indicates the brain's wonderful compensatory capacities. When we neglect or underutilize some capacities, the brain develops and restructures in ways that enable us to get even greater capacity out of other aspects. Neurodiversity speaks to different types of intelligence, learning styles, communication styles, appetite for risk, openness to change and much more. When someone has a different setting, they are not disabled. They are, as singer Danny Deardoff put it, differently abled. The people who succeed in the workplace and education system do so mainly because their intelligence matches the dominant paradigm or they have found ways to adapt to the mainstream and perhaps mask their true identities. Neurosignature, the neurochemical graphic equalizer. As a kid, our family had a hi-fi system. I loved it. It had a record deck, cassette decks, an amplifier, a subwoofer, and a graphic equalizer. Just as the graphic equalizer displays the signature of audio output, I visualize the brain doing the same thing with the signature of our neurochemicals composition. What if our workplaces were crafted to harmonize everyone's unique brain potentials, our brain patterns, or what our recent guest on the innovation show, Friederica Fabrizius, calls our neurosignature? Each of our brain structures are as unique as our fingerprints. Four powerful elements shape our personalities. Dopamine and serotonin, estrogen and testosterone. These neurotransmitters are the brain's messengers between nerve cells or neurons. Just like different songs on a graphic equalizer, each displays a distinct neurosignature. Dopamine. High dopamine individuals love to explore and try new things. They thrive in ambiguity and crave change. They bring humor and fun to the workplace and can be very charismatic and inspiring. They're often innovators, change makers, inventors and entrepreneurs. They get bored easy and are always looking for the next thrilling project. These individuals are vibrant, imaginative and spontaneous. They are also typically optimistic and generous. However, they can be reckless, susceptible to addictions and lack attention to detail. Organizations should provide them with creative freedom and autonomy to keep them engaged. They love fresh projects, regular promotions and job mobility. Avoid stifling them with excessive routine, or they may lose their spark. High dopamine individuals can sometimes overwhelm others with their energy, their love for change and their occasional impatience. Serotonin. People high in serotonin are reliable, they're detail-oriented, they're cautious and loyal, they thrive on routine and structure and enjoy consistency and stability. Testosterone. People high in testosterone are tough-minded, they're direct and they enjoy wielding power. They tend to be analytical and use systems thinking, which involves moving logically from step to step to solve a problem based on systems or rules. They enjoy tinkering with systems such as car engines or computers. 
People high in estrogen are empathetic and good at building personal connections and community. Estrogen increases in the secretion of oxytocin, which enhances feelings of bonding and trust. This neurosignature excels at non-linear, lateral thinking, which involves examining a problem from multiple angles until insights emerge. Lateral thinkers are good at envisioning the long-term implications of a decision. Imagine how demoralizing and exhausting it must be for someone with autism to conform or someone with ADHD to engage in mundane work. Someone with a distinct neurosignature fighting their true identity all day can leave you deflated and depressed. Frederica shares some fascinating research from Neurocolor that shows that roughly 28% of men in general population and around 72% of women exhibit traits associated with the high estrogen brain. The data reinforces that gender should never be used as a stereotype for anyone's personality or thinking style. In a recent episode of The Innovation Show, my friend and our guest Charles Kahn lauded the value of what he calls a dragon eye mindset, seeing the world through different lenses. He shares how Lawrence Fung of Stanford's Neurodiversity Project observed that successful problem solvers in Silicon Valley often show signs of being on the neurodiverse spectrum. Such individuals, he said, have a unique ability to connect the dots, which allows them to reach conclusions quickly. Neurodiverse individuals have cognitive tendencies to look at the details first before the bigger picture, contrary to how most people dissect an issue essentially broaching an issue from a very different lens or level. A final thought, led by this beautiful Islamic proverb, a lot of different flowers make a bouquet. The world has changed immeasurably, and society faces increasing levels of VUCA volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity. If times have changed, then the compositions of the teams to master those times must change. Homogenous teams operated well in relative stability. These groups excel at incremental change, process improvements and exploitation of an existing competitive advantage. Diverse teams, on the other hand, they summer a larger set of skills and perspectives. Neurodiversity is ideal for creative innovation challenges when the future is ambiguous and the path is non-linear. In a changing workplace, rather than hiring solely based on skill, we might consider a candidate's neurosignature. Each neurosignature brings unique strengths to the table. Hiring for neurosignature and training for skill might lead to higher workplace happiness, higher revenue and lower employee turnover. As our recent guest on the Innovation Show a couple of weeks ago, Helen Edwards said, the more people differ in their ethnicity, gender, background, age and sexuality, the greater the likelihood that they will have encountered different marginal behaviours and life choices. Combine that with a declared celebration of diversity of thought. You will get people speaking up for those marginal behaviours and corporate decisions, innovation programmes new product development, new market categories, and new routes to growth. This enhanced diversity on the inside is one of the reasons we will see more ways to satisfy the extraordinary behavioral diversity that does exist, hitherto often unrecognized in contemporary society. It's been with a deliberate aim that I've sprinkled this week's Thursday Thought with quotes from a kaleidoscope of neurosignatures and sources. Yet, there's one sentiment that I want to leave this week with. It encapsulates the essence of the theme. It's from the luminous Maya Angelou who said, in diversity, there is beauty and there is strength. Thanks for joining me on the inaugural Thursday Thought Audio Edition. See you soon.